What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? I am BDLM, coming to you with my buddy J4Y and our special guest, Sheever. How are you? Hey, I'm doing good. Thank you. Well, and I hope likewise. Show. Yes, I'm doing well. How are, how are you doing, Jay? I'm doing pretty good here. Uh, good intro, as always, for episode 35. Boom. There you go. Yeah, we're going to be talking uh, with Shiva here for a bit, of course, and then talking about the patch, as we typically do. Uh, yeah, it's great to, it's great to have you on the show. I'm glad I got to actually cast, or, or got to see you guys cast some games earlier today. It was pretty nice. Yeah, it was uh, very, sorry, my cat just threw something on the floor. But yeah, <laughs> it, was, uh, it, was, it was very nice. Yeah, I just so it, was, say... uh, it was actually a good game, too, with two teams that were fairly new. It was kind of enjoyable. I did like the Undying van out, which was pretty interesting, which you guys noticed as well. I also like the cat go going across. It's hilarious. It's <laughs> yeah, sorry. I just have to put it to the other side because he's going to throw off more stuff otherwise, so I just have to put it off the desk. Kind of. No worries. That's okay. But yeah, the uh, Undying coming into it into play, it's kind of interesting. And uh, that's something that me and Jay talked about last week. It's kind of interesting that I, I read this guy's blog and he was like, you know, this is like the one time where Undying has a chance to come in because the meta is sort of all about that mid game uh, aggression and early pushing where he kind of has a chance to stand out. Yeah, well, well I saw like today he was banned out twice, both games, but other than that, I have not seen him. I've heard of him though, where EG played him today versus there, but, but that's it. Other than that, no undying dirge for me. Yeah, I mean, he, he wasn't used in Dota 1 as well, very often at all, as we kind of noticed. Uh, and that's why I was we were so shocked that, like, out of nowhere, this team just bans him twi uh, both games. It was just like, really? I mean, like, maybe they expected uh, the other team to just run them constantly for whatever reason? But, I, yeah, it definitely threw me for a curve, at least. I know that much. Yeah, kind of interesting. But yeah, let's let's get introduced to you, Ms. Schieber. Um So how did how did you actually get into your casting? How long have you been doing it now? Uh, since the end of March or start start of April, kinda. It was uh, it was basically by accident. I uh, I was I was I was thinking I, w I should do more for for with Dota two, and I wanted to uh, to organize tournaments, and I uh, volunteered as a uh, admin for an amateur tournament, and I actually did that successfully. And with the first game where it, it was all games best out of three. It was a very large tournament, I ran over an entire month, and everything best out of three. Uh, 52 teams, I think. And the first game, I already streamed games at that point, and I was going to stream a game for for the tournament, too, just as an opening, just, uh, you know, because the, we weren't having any casts or something. But uh, with an admin, I was in the game, and I figured, well, why not just commentate on it? So we started doing that, and uh, we continued, and then... There was a, diff a different amateur tournament, which also asked me to uh, to cast. It was a day tournament. Uh, it was actually very enjoyable, and I enjoyed it more and more and continued doing it. And then at some point, someone from Ghost of Gamers came up and said, well, maybe you should uh, apply here. And uh, I did. And uh, I got it. And then I cast more and more games. Very That's nice. That's basically how it went. Yeah. Well, it wasn't it wasn't a plan or anything, so it just it just happened. Kind very of. Sp Spontaneous casting. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, kind of. It's that way. There you go. I mean, if if you're watching a game anyway, because normally you know you, you stream, you can talk while you're playing and stuff. But if you then watch a game, it's it's a it's a whole lot different. You can't just sit there and, and just shut up because it looks a bit stupid. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> so what kind of what kind of uh, heroes have you been enjoying actually playing in the Dota 2? Because obviously we all know you as a caster. What who do you actually enjoy playing the most? Well, it used to be Venomancer uh, for a very long time. I play support roles mostly, but I'm starting to enjoy Le Shrek a lot more. Also in a support role, though, but uh, basically because I can I can do a lot more with uh, with kills. Also, a bit, bit more ganking, kind of maybe, even though I don't really gank. But uh, <laughs> mostly support role. So so Crystal Main, Venomancer, Shadow Demon, those kind of heroes. I hate to say, it, nice. isn't that a stereotype? that Double. female gamers play the support role. I don't mean anything by it, of course. I'm just saying. My, my co-caster at BDLM, of course, known to play a lot of support. So, uh, I don't know. Is it, is it because, uh, is that the way the game was introduced to you? Like, hey, play this Crystal Maid. You'll, you'll get a good kick out of her. Or is that something you really just enjoy doing? I, I enjoy doing it. I, I Well, also, I can't really last hit. So, you know, carry is kind of out of the question. And... Uh, you know, I like supporting. I've uh, I've played World of Warcraft for a very long time. I was a healer there, so your stereotypes go go there as well. <laughs> but I really enjoyed that also. Yeah, I uh, 
I definitely like being the unsung hero. That's always fun. And then, yeah, I uh, it was a healer back in the day in the, the world of Warcraft as well. Aren't you guys two so, pizza pod? Jeez. I, there you go. Yeah, you're like, oh, support Crystal Maiden. What? That's, that's awesome. All right, well, very nice. Uh, what what hero are you looking forward to the most that hasn't been released yet? Are you uh, interested in anyone? There, there, there has been a there has been a lot of releases already, and there's not that many left. But I guess out of the ones that still have to come, I I have played Dota one only for a very short time, and I don't remember a lot of heroes from it. Uh, there were some heroes that are in now that I didn't play because they weren't in yet when I played Dota one. Same. Here. Um, but Senta. <laughs> was a hero that I did play a couple times at the end of my Dota 1 um, career. I can't really call it a career because I, I really didn't know there was anything like a competitive scene or anything. But I uh, I played him and I, I can't remember if you were able to blink to a target or if you got a blink dagger and then blink to a target because I think I bought a blink dagger on that hero and then blink to a target and started killing stuff. And that was actually the first hero ever I got a blink dagger on. That was when I discovered blink daggers. It was actually really fun. Yeah, that's, I, that's basically the hero I look forward to. But I avoided Blink Dagger like the plague when I first started playing. Like that was like, no, that's too much responsibility. There's no way this is gonna it's work out well at all. <laughs> I never got that much gold. Well, apart from when I played Lich because I went for a Scotty on him. You know, it's a frost. Oh, oh very nice. Like, Keeping it arrows, nice. You know that was. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. That, that was my logic behind it. <laughs> this one has uh, decided that Dazzle with uh, Scotty is just the best thing around. Yeah. yeah. But Dazzle is like Dazzleator. Come on. Oh, there you go. Oh, it's... wow. That actually makes more sense now that I have to think about it. Yeah. How did I'm I make that coming? myself for not <laughs> thinking of that myself. That's fantastic. Uh, there you go. That's pretty interesting. You never got enough money. Yeah, that's the thing. Like when you start games, first of all, you're probably terrible at last hitting in the first place. So to get like twenty one hundred gold and not die before it all goes away is a pretty impressive feat in the first place. But then also to like kind of luckily like play here, like Centaur War Chief actually is in a hero where Blink Dagger is like actually an amazing item for. Whereas I probably would have done something like Omni Knight and been like, yeah, Blink Dagger, let's go in and uh, heal people or something. So I don't he's, know, he's done it. I've seen. Hey, it. that would actually work though. That would actually it's true. work. It's true. You can blink in here yourself, and heroes would die around you. I have seen him do it. I and have. It's not totally on purpose, but it has happened nonetheless. I think I actually was buying an ultimate orb, and I accidentally clicked the blink dagger, but I made it work, and that's what's really important when you get items, you know. Exactly. Yeah, the, our, uh, our other friend of the show, Bonk, is actually, like, crazy excited for Meepo, and has been very excited to see the progress on the art for him. She just rolled her eyes. It. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> I mean, he's like the hero that has multiple heroes that can jump into his own illusions, right? That's, that's, yeah. I, I remember him, because he was annoying. <laughs> and, yeah. Well, yeah, I'm not going to play that one, probably. Yeah, that's, that's oh. definitely what I'm staying away from myself. It's too micro intensive for me. I I, try, I shy away from the micro heroes personally, just because I don't like you were talking about responsibility earlier. Yeah, that's way too much for me. Chen and Chan just forget about it. Beastmaster maybe because I can send the hawk to just be AFK for a long time, and then the boar I just tell it to attack with my Beastmaster, I'm good to go. But aside from that, yeah, I don't think I want to handle like three or four little Meepo dudes running around at the same time. I agree with that, <laughs> definitely. Uh, now, what's yeah. your thoughts? So, this is actually really important. What are your thoughts on goblin techies? Be honest. <laughs> if he's in my team, great. I love him. If he's yes. not in my team, I probably will die to him. <laughs> That's basically That's my opinion. Well, see, you're, you're like me. You're like the support here. You're like, I have a 900 health max. This is going to go terrible <laughs> for me, no matter what. Just be walking as through. As soon as I see river. that guy on the opposite team, it's like, oh, I'm going to die. Yep. Yeah. You're so That's scared. You get so scared. You just don't want to go anywhere except stay in your lane. You're like, if I roam around, I'm going to die. If I go for a rune, I'm going to die. If I do anything, like you just want to stay in your lane and just pretend like the rest of the game doesn't exist. <laughs> <laughs> I, I did like to play for a couple games because I was actually playing mid then also. Wow. I remember that. Um, and I just placed boards all over, yeah, well, traps all over the thing. As soon as they pushed in, they died. It was kind of fun. It didn't happen happened that much and I didn't use it you know, to help my team but more to try to stop the pushing and in the meantime of course the rest of the game fell apart around me but it was still fun to do. <laughs> exactly. I never really suicided on him though. 
Yo, you, you, you gotta get the blink dagger. I was gonna say, that's the pure with the attack. blink dagger, if anything, right there. <laughs> to be honest. Blink dagger suicide. Yeah. I think you should go go Dagon with that too, so you can blink in Dagon, then suicide attack. Just make That'll sure. Kill them all. Yeah. Take down everyone. This is why you don't play techies, BDL. This is exactly why. No. You don't know the finesse that it takes. When uh, Once again, I've already said before, but when he comes in, I will show you the ways of the techies, and you will truly I know appreciate how he's supposed to be played. He was actually picked up in the a competitive Dota 1 series. I'm trying to remember now, but it was pretty recent, and there was like this big story about it. I don't know if she ever heard about it, but it was like this guy, and he, like, no. he just like loves techies for whatever reason, and he played it in like a final series, and he played the first game, they won really because of him, and they banned out techies in the next game because they just did not want to deal with it. In a real big pro finals game. It was uh, Nico, I think, was his uh, name. Oh, Nico, yeah. Or Nico, something like that. Don't worry about pronunciation. We, yeah, uh, yeah. I, I've learned to let that go at this point, because like, there's, especially more games I've done recently, there's been names like, all over the place. I'm just like, I know I'm going to mess up at least half of these, and there's no point getting yourself worked up over it, because someone's going to be like, yeah, it's actually blah, blah, blah. I'm like, okay. Whatever, man. That's that's cool. The frantic googling for the Come phonetics. She told me Konnichiwa today. I learned a little bit of Chinese because that was one of the, was... the players' names. I was like, ah, but, yes. But Konnichiwa is like is like that's a recognizable word, right? I don't know if it's actually means hello, but but I know the word Konnichiwa. <laughs> yeah. Somehow. That's one of those where it, I forget what it was. I uh, I was reading etc. Like actually spelled out and had never seen it. And I was like, what the heck is etc. Like that doesn't make any sense. I was like, it's it's etc. Thing. Wow. Oh, okay. Thanks. Oh, yeah. All right. I got it. Uh, That's kind of sad. Okay. Well, you know, it ha oh, Mr. Konnichiwa over oh, here. Oh, because that's a common word. I think etc. Is? is a little more common than Konnichiwa <laughs> over here in the states, at least. But uh, speaking of which. I give mad props and respect to Shiva for staying on at 2 a.m. where she is compared to us in the U.S. I mean, uh, just th thanks for staying on this coffee. late for us. <laughs> I actually just had a cup of coffee, and it's quarter after eight. So just so... Hey, I had a, can I make a commercial? Because I had a Red Bull at 11, knowing that I still had to go a long way. <laughs> and that works. And I normally don't 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 you don't drink Red Bull or use energy drinks or something during my cast and stuff. So she just, doesn't uh, drink energy drinks. But once she does, it's a Red Bull. <laughs> there you go. Well, it does. It's a Red Bull. Yeah, <laughs> it doesn't really work that well. I think. What? I mean, you hear a lot of people that are not able to sleep after drinking Red Bull, but I don't have that problem. Oh, there you go. It keeps you up when you need to be up, and then after that, you're good. Actually, uh, our, our good friend Bog, who is actually Japanese, just uh, corrected us that Konnichiwa is Japanese and not Chinese. Okay, well, it's, <laughs> it's still, it's, it's, is it hello then? Is it hello? Yeah, hopefully at least we can get to into yep. that. I, hey, SEA, <laughs> let's just keep it in the region. You know, not China, not Japan, just in that area. Okay? There you go. Asia. East, Asian. east, Asian. somewhere over yonder. So, <laughs> what what time is it actually? I mean, like, when do you typically have to be on to do a lot of casting? Because, like, me and Jay have been doing some casting for the Reddit League, and the the times are a little funny sometimes. So, what t time do you typically have to do your games? Um, well, sometimes there's games starting at four, but that's uh, that's a bit over now. It was mostly with the uh, Star Ladder still, and. Uh, some Proto two, Proto 2 was mostly at 4, also for uh, for Asian as well as for Europe. And for the rest, it's uh, I'm, I'm mostly casting Ghost League now, and that starts either at 6 or at 8 or at 10. Oh, that's times. pretty good. Yeah. Um, and usually it's like 6 and 8, or 6 and 8 and 10, or, you know, multiple at the same night. It's also nice that it's pretty reasonable. best of two instead of best of three. Because you, like, you, you know guaranteed about how long you're going to spend, but when it's like a best of three, there's like... Oh, well, there's a chance that this could be three one-hour games instead of two. So, like, I have yeah. to commit that extra hour just in case. And, like, at least you're like, okay, this is my two-hour block. I know I'm going to at least do that. <laughs> it could either be 40 minutes or eight hours. So good luck somewhere in there. <laughs> Depending on these games. <laughs> yeah, they actually had some trouble with that with... Uh with Star Ladder because they planned like two, two and a half hours for, for each game and then, you know, hopefully some games will have two games and some games will have, uh, you, know, you know, three, but they still plan some time in that for that. But actually they were on, for example, on Friday, there were so many best out of threes, as in three games for each. That was, uh, it kind of really, it was kind of funny. Was, uh, yeah, they actually had to postpone one game. What's the longest game reason. you've had to cast? Do you remember? 
I have a, had a couple of games about 83, sorry, 73 minutes, I think. Okay. That's probably one of the longest. Nothing like a two-hour marathon or something. Here no, you can not, see. Not, I know that the game for, uh, I know uh, God's casted that together with LD, I believe, and that was actually 100 minutes long. Oh. Wow. That, that was... I, I can't remember. It was Asian Dota, but I can't remember which teams. Were they just farming? <laughs> uh, just farming? And then eventually when they yeah. made their 800 gold per minute, like, alright, we're going to push now. Like, <laughs> <laughs> we can buy back Although, it was times. It was like one team had a Tidehunter and the other team had also some kind of team fight hero and they both had a hard carry, so they had a team fight and then nobody died or no, nothing came out of it. <laughs> And then they backed off again, started farming again until their cooldowns were off, and then they went again. So I'm I'm not sure. And at that time, I don't know. They weren't playing Dota 2 that much, so I think that if it was uh, like like for example, Navi versus one of those teams, they would have gone in and taken advantage of their advantage way earlier, because it was it was just a bit it was just long. Let's keep it at that. <laughs> <laughs> and really, yeah. how about then the opposite of that? Have there been any of those really quick games where, like, you've seen like MTW winning in like 13 minute kind of games? Mm, yeah, I think 16 minutes is about wow. the shortest that I've had it. Wow. Yeah. That's almost but disappointing, sure. though. Like, it's almost like, wow, this was just a brutal slaughter. Like, what kind of game was this? Yeah. <laughs> That's true. Very one-sided. Then, although I guess if you're gonna have a one-sided game anyway, it better be over with fast because Fair. that's not fun to cast and. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of cool, too, because you get to see, like, exactly what goes wrong where you have something end that quickly. Just exactly what it is that are able to give you that kind of advantage to be able to take it so quickly. Yep, that's true. All right, what do you what do you guys think about getting into Lanaya? Sound good? Yeah, let's hop into Lanaya. I, I think we all are a pretty big fan of this. Well, actually, I thought you weren't as much BDLM, but uh, I guess yeah. we'll get into it first and then <laughs> get some opinions going. So you want to just kind of briefly go over her? Um, sure. Her Q ability Refraction will actually give you two separate instances. One gives you a bonus attack damage. The other one will give you uh, damage absorption, negating any damage you take. Uh, meld makes you turn invisible while you're standing on a particular spot. It gives you bonus damage and armor reduction on your very next attack. Psy Blades will increase your attack range. Gives you a little bit of a damage spill, so you can hit targets behind the target you're attacking. And then Stasis Trap, the ultimate will place a trap that eventually turns invisible. And then you can detonate it for a 50% movement speed slow. And these traps give about 400 vision. So there you go, your quick little rundown. Very nice. So uh, uh, I guess we'll start with our special guest, because why not? That's why you're here. What are your opinions <laughs> on the lovely Templar Assassin? Well, right now she's having, or she had a bit of an advantage of being new, so she got picked up a bit. I, but I'm not sure she's quite of a good solo mid hero. She has good room control, but I, I'm not sure. I've seen her lose. I've seen her win. If she is. I, it's, it feels like she's being shut down very easy because if she doesn't get her blink dagger up, then she's not going to be able to do any kind of carry roll. But if the opponent has no no counters for ref refraction, then she's kind of strong, especially because she, she can just tank up towers and stuff and dive towers really early with that up. And uh, yeah, it's, it's just an overall okay hero if in the right situation. Kind of, I, I kind of compare it to Beastmaster, even though it's not really, I mean, side lane wise. Beastmaster is not always nice to have either, but it could work out some extra vision. Beastmaster and the Templar Assassin, even more oh, vision with the hawk and the traps. Oh, how could you, can you see not everything. win with that at that point? Oh. <laughs> and then tech yeah, those, tra later. those traps. I feel like the traps are a bit underrated because you can you can place traps at j like junctions where people will definitely pass, and then you know you can see them coming. You don't really need wards anymore. Mm -hmm. And at level three, you can have eleven. I mean, yeah. come on. I mean, the 400 11. range is actually like the width of all major paths that you can think of, essentially. Like, being able to put one in the river, like where the rune spawns, you get like that yeah. whole area. You can't really sneak around those too easily. And so it's actually a really nice offensive tool, too. Because, like you said, you get up to 11, which is a little excessive. And then, of course, you can actually just plant them and then detonate them right away, which is uh, fantastic for actually being able to use that to go in on heroes. Because they actually have a, a pretty decent cast range as well. Yeah, I like to line them up. Yeah. I, I like to I think of it similar to like the Broodmother webs of like how you can just put them all down a lane and then like one by one as the people are coming uh, towards you or running away, you're like detonate, detonate, detonate. They just there's nowhere they can go because they're just you know perma slowed at that point. 
Yeah, it is pretty interesting. I, I do think it's kind of neat how that side blades things work. I mean, her bonus attack range goes up to about 240, so still very short range, um, but works really well with that melt, of course, because you can't move once you to use your invisibility. So it's kind of hard to sort of take advantage of early on, I feel like, especially like like you were saying, Shiva, without that blink dagger, it, it's really difficult to try and be able to get the jump on people. So you sort of have to have that range in order to be able to take advantage of meld in the earlier parts of the game. Uh, Shiva, yeah, I do feel like yeah. uh, like Savage is mostly for farming, also, kind of. Oh yeah, it's useful. wonderful for that. You pop the refraction in the meld. You could just pretty much one shot a creep wave right there. Uh, but you said you saw yep. her picked up, or at least uh, you heard about her used in a pro game. Now, can you give us just a little more detail on that? I uh, I actually it was a game that happened at the same time as a star ladder match, and it was uh, it was actually the first game where uh, Lanai was picked up in competitive play, and I got to cast it because you know there was nobody else because the rest was all casting star ladder. It was a pro Dota two game between IG and Orange. Uh, YouTube is up my, on my YouTube, and um, it was actually he was played mid by uh, KYXY, and just he owned really he owned. There. I believe there was a Lena or something in that game. She was just such a sad Lena. Oh. I mean, really, she died a lot in that game, and uh, IG really owned that game. It was it was great to see her, even though I did call her Phantom Assassin the whole time. <laughs> well, not the whole time, but most of the time. Uh, it, and 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 I, you know, I didn't know all the tactical stuff yet because I was kind of I was watching Starlight the whole day and didn't really read up on it or anything. Uh, so I only afterwards that I got told by uh, by Waka Mama like the kind of counters and more information about it and stuff. But uh, I couldn't really say anything useful during the cast. But it was really fun to watch, regardless. Yeah, I mean, you think against Lena, the refraction is beautiful because it's just instances of damage. So no matter how big they are, it's going to negate them completely. So, of course, with Laguna yeah. Blade and then Finger of Death online, not that we see him too often, but just a fantastic counter there. But, you know, uh, you and me, for those heroes, Venomancer especially, uh, being able to put up those ticks of damage that will actually burn through those refractions. Venomancer Alex Shrek. Oh, yeah, yeah. best carries. Yeah, yeah I mean, uh, the, guess counter. Sorry. Yeah, the Lashrak Diabolic Edict. That's every point two five seconds that you get a damage instance. And other ones I saw, obviously not all that popular, like uh, Macro Pyre from Twin Headed Dragon. Actually, is uh, pretty good for it. Just if you're walking that Mom at all. It's Gyrocopter. Although gyrocopter, we don't see yeah. him very often, but maybe if you see a, a Templar oh, Assassin, there. you're like gonna pick him up right away. There you go. So yeah, like yep. dots make it really. Uh, really hard for her. I think uh, another great way to try and counter her out if you're having trouble playing against her. Yeah, Lushrek's Edict actually gets the refraction of in like a second or so. It's, uh, it's really quick. Yeah. That's, so that's, that's probably one of the best counters there for her right now. Although but yeah, yeah Venomance and Lushrek, those two, and they were, those weren't in the opposite team right there. So I don't think they were kind of surprised by that Templar Assassin. Just like me. I was surprised. Yeah, I mean, that's... that's that's like the only unfortunate thing, and I feel like we had this happen with a hero not too long ago, where it's like, this hero could be really useful unless you pick these sorts of heroes, and these sorts of heroes happen to be really popular, like essentially, especially Lashrak, like it's just such a big part of the metagame right now, like, he's probably yeah. gonna wind up popping up anyhow, so how can you really sort of take advantage of that? Templar assassin pick. Unless you like run, yeah, like unless you get her first. Maybe if you get uh, like Lashrak first or in the first three, and then maybe TA's more like a last pick. Like we saw Ricky today in the games we casted. Like I think a pick like that has to be the fifth and final because otherwise it's so easy for that team. Like oh well, then we gotta go this character to make sure she doesn't do anything. So I think yeah, that that's like a surprise pick more than anything at this point. Yeah, uh -huh. or, or, you know, if the first day, just uh, throw people off guard. Yeah. Because, I mean, it, I think it was picked up as a third pick in that game, but Orange, did just they did not know, know how to counter it, I guess. Or the counts were already banned out. I think Lashrak was already picked up by that time by the team that also had the Templar Assassin. So, yeah, that was kind of painful. Yeah, I mean, that's the other thing, too. I mean, you figure a lot of these here, a lot of these players actually, you know, maybe haven't gotten to play Dota 1 at all or maybe a very little bit. I mean, we've had a lot of players actually come over from Han, so really don't have any kind of introduction to these sort of heroes. So they come out the first day and they're like, wait, what? I've been playing games all day. I have no idea what this hero does. So it can get really, you know, taken off guard quickly by stuff the like that. So. Caught off guard, the fact that when she came in, she was, like, already in captain's mode. This is like the first hero exactly. that they've done that with, and that really, I think, threw a lot of these teams off because you came in with Disruptor and Undying, like you said. So, like, teams were just, I think, definitely taken aback when that happened. Yeah, how yeah. many, how many days... He was apparently tested enough. 
How many days was it after she was put in a test that she came out on the main client? Because I was actually away all week, so I don't... One day? I mean, she came on the test at, uh, at, at mon oh, sorry, Wednesday night. Mm -hmm. you, know, you know, for you it would be just Wednesday. And she came on uh, Captain's Mode Thursday night. Wow, yeah, so that'll do it, I guess. <laughs> Not much time yeah. to practice. Yeah. Against this sort of thing. So what kind of uh, skill builds do you think are, are really useful on her Shiver? Oh, I I have to say I've got no clue. I uh, um I would then say like I mean I I'm, I'm come on I'm not a I'm not a I'm not a professional player so I I really can't say anything about that. I probably personally I would go for the side blades because I like ranged heroes and you know you can hit a ranged um, refraction. Yeah, I it's like everything. Uh -huh. Yeah, but <laughs> it depends also on what what lane you're against, I guess. I mean, if you versus the Venomance or Oiler Shrek, I'm not gonna give Refraction all that much. Maybe just once, but then Side Laser Melt or something, just to be able to hit harder and do that. But other than that, it, yeah, I don't know. Well, you know, BDLM. Yeah. So. I think my favorite build is to get all four abilities maxed out. I think that's oh, really? the way I would, yeah. that's the way I think I would yeah. build this hero personally. No. I agree. <laughs> I was thinking stats and nothing else. Maybe that's that's the secret. Just get right. that tax speed up. That's yeah, yeah, exactly. Peculiar. I don't know if I'd agree with that, but maybe well, you can make it work. The way uh, yeah, I exactly. saw her actually played recently competitively um, was they actually got the one point refraction pretty early to get last hits really easily, and then they actually maxed out meld first, and that way they could get a huge minus armor as well as bonus damage. It's a really it's a seven second cooldown, I believe, so it's really short. And they were able they were against one on one at least against Beastmaster in that particular game, so they just like right ran right up to him. Popped out, did a huge burst of damage to him, and he couldn't react in time. And then eventually she got her traps, and appear like Beastmaster cannot escape. I mean, he's got no no outs at that point. So it was pretty interesting. I personally thought Refraction Maxing would make the most sense because it gives more instances as well as that 20 extra damage per instance. But, I mean, I guess I could see, but I, I personally think Sideblades, uh, it's hard not to get it because you don't get that range increase, so you're still almost like a melee hero if you don't. So damned if you do, damned if you don't. But I don't know. I, like all three of these, all four of these abilities are so good that it is hard to make a, a clear decision. Yeah, that's what I was about to say. Like every single one of them is so nice, and you could totally see instances where you know you have just about any of these combinations working out really well together. But yeah, I definitely like I think prioritizing the side blades. And like I was saying earlier, it makes the meld that much more effective because you can actually take advantage of it as far as ganking people or catch people off guard really anything uh, without that you're just using it as you're like running at somebody with your uh, refraction stacks up hoping for the best to be able to just you know get that little pop of damage but uh what, what kind of items do you like picking up on her jay jay oh yeah. i get to go oh. first how nice yeah well, well thank you, know. you very Ooh. much oh, oh very nice <laughs> uh oh crap now i don't know uh no i i, I think i think it's pretty uh clear that you want to get phase boots really quick on her to just add to that burst damage but also uh a blink dagger is not core but very very handy to have uh especially you can say core I, probably core you would probably want to say it's just she needs a way to get in there and do her damage the thing is she has a very low range throughout the whole game uh, but she's very bursty. So if she can blink onto someone, detonate a trap to keep him slow, and then meld and quickly just burst them down with that refraction, I think uh, that's I, I, the only reason I, I shied away from core is I, I'm considering four staff as an option. Just considering it. You're crazy. Person. I like it on every single hero. Well, the I've ever only played. thing so. is is that with the blink, you can also. I mean, you have that refraction and. The blink dagger now it doesn't get put on, on cooldown if someone Ooh. hits you through the refraction. Mm -hmm. So you can blink away anytime, and I, I do think that's a bit more better, especially if you're going to use it aggressively. Then a blink is way better than uh, than a four staff, just to to time out exactly where you want to go, rather than a four staff. And uh, and a desolator on her, of course, as well. Extra minus armor is just so painful. Yeah, I, I think by that time, if you get that ready, then you uh, you basically already ended the game. Yeah, I definitely like the Blink Dagger. It feels a lot like Blink Dagger on Brewmaster, where it's like something you definitely want to be able to get to really help give you that sort of initiation and that um, extra utility. Like, you can make do without it, but it's just so nice to be able to get. It gives you that just sort of surprise ability. And because you can just jump in and then meld and get that, that next attack off doing all that bonus damage and the armor reduction, and then, yeah, like you were saying, Shiver, the, the Desolator really uh, come and pick up as well. I kind of like the um, like Ring of Aquila. Like, I'm just partial to that. I'm partial to Basilius in general, but all of her abilities are really cheap and on a, uh, a pretty short cooldown, and being able to keep up that refraction often can help secure you some uh, some last hits on creeps and 
making sure that all your abilities are up and ready to go whenever you need them. That was a long speech. That was a uh, really, but at least it was informative. You know. That's okay. No, sometimes you need those. You need those just spurts of information that I tuned into about half of. So, you know, I definitely respect Good. your opinion that you probably had on that topic. Probably. Um, but, yeah, no, as, as far as the rest of the items, though, I mean, I, I personally like to see a Desolator as well, just to stack up the Maya's armor. Uh, but that's just more to keep her a super bursty, bursty hero. Medallion actually is getting mentioned in the chat. Uh, an, an interesting choice in that. But I'm not sure exactly what you need because, uh, you know, it, it, like you said, it does make you kind of, or it doesn't really help you too much. It just adds, I guess, that burst component. I don't know what I'm saying. Maybe I, I'm thinking in terms of the items you pick up and, like, the fact that I prefer maybe bottle for regen in most cases. But some people probably disagree with me in that statement. The only thing that's weird about Medallion is you're getting all that extra armor and you're not really as relying on stats at all for your survivability. So, I mean, you really are just trying to use refraction to keep you alive for these fights and otherwise you're just building yep. up your damage so I think that's the only thing that is kind of weird with that but I mean I do kind of like that item pickup but mm, I, I don't think that's she's what I would... She's not meant to be a sustained fighter. Excuse me, she's not meant to be a sustained fighter. <laughs> I don't know, I took a gulp of water and it went down the wrong pipe or something. Kill them before they kill you. Yes, that's yes. exactly yes. her train of thought I believe. I mean like, you, you really are not going to go in there and like go, hey anti-mage, let's have a duel. You know, that's not going to happen. You're going to go, hey support in the back, let me two-shot you. And hopefully the side made splash <laughs> kills the rest of the team or something. Like, you know, that's kind of her, I think her style. <laughs> Yes, certainly, yep. but I mean, that's also, I think, a, a wonderful item to sort of put on a support hero if you're uh, on a team with a Templar sure. Assassin. I mean, just being able to add, stack that up, and then when you start to go for targets like Roshan, I mean, pay, having that item and then just having the meld too with that just makes that stuff go down very quickly. Yeah. I don't think you can actually solo it still then, though. Maybe with a refra- yeah, maybe. The refraction there. I wonder could if you be. could. Or I wonder how early you can. I bet you probably can't do it too early, but maybe earlier than some other agility heroes. Did you say solo yeah. or Sean? Yeah. Yes. What? We're going crazy. Are you guys over crazy? Here. No. It's like she it's like not. She... At level four. What? It's and like, you have a medallion, yeah. and you have a desolator, and you got your, you got everything at level four or three, whatever, and you can you can do it. Yeah, you can. It's Everybody like the, the enigma solo Roshan. Once you have the medallion of courage, right? Like things you would never consider. Make it work. Okay. We'll, we'll figure it out. Yep. Don't okay. worry. I, I actually like, I would buy Draw a level 1 Roshan team, because she does give them Maya's armor for the team. So maybe you could make that fit in. Like an Ursa, an Ursa Templar Assassin team or something. There you go. Don't, I don't Ursa think Templar that's Templar Assassin with Skeleton King? Yep. Oh yeah. There you go. Yeah. Everything. <laughs> there you go. Three of us inventing the new meta. Probably. Every week. There you go. I like it. But, uh, I mean... Oh, we do see Ursa more. Do you? You I actually yeah. have to admit, I, I've been bad. I haven't been keeping up with too many pro games recently because we've done a lot of kind of side casting for nothing. Okay, I'm going to shout out because our podcast, whatever. Uh, it's been yeah. for the Re Dota 2 Reddit League. If you are on the Dota 2 Reddit, we actually uh, do have our own thing there. We've been doing some kind of small shout casting for the teams there. But, you know, we get to see different kind of games, of course, because the skill level of those games is probably nothing like the games I got to cast with you today, but, you know, they're still interesting in their own way, because you do also get to see the off-the-wall picks that you definitely don't see yeah. at all in the pro games, so, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, it's it's just fun, actually, just getting to, you know, engage the community, too, like that. Like, it's really cool to see people sort of putting those little teams together, and some of them are actually quite good, and it's nice getting to, uh, to watch them. Yeah. So wh what kind of uh, comps have you been seeing the Ursa with? I'm actually kind of curious about that now. Coming out. Well, I've now seen... Um, well, you, I, I, I hope you have seen the game between Mouse and Dare. No, nah, yeah. 89 kills in 22 minutes. I've heard about that it. That sounds exciting. <laughs> I like it. You, you haven't seen that? No. You should definitely still watch it. It's the uh, it's it's on my YouTube. Uh, I under the name of uh, Insane Game because there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of Mouse Dare games actually, but it's under the name of Insane Games. Like probably now about three weeks ago, but uh, yeah, that was a Roshan level one, and then basically Roshan the rest of the game too. <laughs> but uh, with a um, the first three pickups, Venomancer, Crystal Main, Earthshaker. Just three heroes with the most powerful level one spells: Fisher, Gale, and Nova, Crystal Nova, Ice Nova, whatever. Mm. 
And then a um, there was a um, skeleton Ursa and Wisp Ursa. It it, uh, it differs because I I've seen multiple games, and I actually casted a game with Infused that went for that same thing, and then with the skeleton Ursa. And then at some point they weren't able to get Roshan. Um, because, you know, the opponents, they, they came and they won the first fight, but then the opponents came, killed everybody off, and they decided, okay, let's not go for that again. And they had the lanes. There were, I think mid lane was the Crystal Main, top lane was a Venomancer, and bottom was a Earthshaker. And the Ursa and the Skeleton King were jungling together. What? That what? is the single greatest thing I've ever heard of in my life. You're saying Crystal Main It was Main's amazing, solo, and, and I've heard that they... Yeah, oh yeah, and I've heard them do that. Before. I, I've I've heard that they did that before, did that uh, after that as well, and it worked out. They won. <laughs> Sorry, spoiler alert. Whoa, there. hey, come <laughs> on. You gotta say spoiler no, no, before I, I you say it. Much, That's I the idea. I told you too much. Mouse there. <laughs> You should do watch Mouse Dare. Not the, this game is nice too, but Mouse Dare is better worth watching, and I'm not gonna spoil that. So, there you but go. yeah, Infuse. I think it was versus Next Z or something. And Next Z is actually the team that brought Ursa back, or at least they were the first team to use it. Even though I did not catch that game, but um, yeah, they actually lost to Infuse for that. It was really entertaining. But now I think uh, last Sunday Infuse wants to go for that again, so they picked up the Venomancer, picked up the Crystal Man and the Earthshaker, and then the opponent team think, okay, you know what? I know what you're gonna go for, so they banned out to Ursa, so then that story ended, unfortunately. Wow, that's that's pretty awesome. That just blows like my it. mind. I yeah. still am really in awe that Crystal Man sold mid in a pro game. Like I've seen it in pubs happen time and time she again. Soloing pop. Could be solo top and then oh, Venomous. Okay, the fact that she's soloed, I don't even ha I don't care what lane she sold. If you said she sold like the neutral camp spot, I'd be surprised at this point. Like I just she she supports Shaker solo too. Oh, how did I even think about the, that? That's the more impressive solo at this point. A crazy one. There's three solo supports. It was it was a really fun game. The question is, did he maximize enchant totem for the deeps that game? I'm not sure. I was too <laughs> busy be watching, uh, being amazed about the game because it was kind of, it was a really amazing game. Because of course, I mean they won, so Ursa and Skeleton King really came out to gank stuff. It was really fun. And Ursa Wisp, I've seen that one too, and that's hilarious to watch. They just gank on top of each other. It was really fun. I think it was Wolves versus DexKZ, I believe. You should watch that one. You're saying we have to watch, like, you just lined up, like, a whole three-hour night for us. Like, we're going to get popcorn yeah. and have to have a yeah. movie night or something now. Jeez. There's, <laughs> yeah. there's no sleep. Gonna happen. Next KZ Game 1, Dota League. Is there a Ghost League Division 1 Season 3? Yeah. What's that? Very nice. I, I, unfortunately, I've been, like, so happy that, that Wisp is in the game now, but I haven't been able to get a chance to watch any professional games at the minute yet. It makes me very sad. Oh. There, there was a game, and I'm gonna, yeah, another one. Uh, you don't really have to watch it, but it was actually <laughs> okay. on the same day. Navi is actually in Ghost League right now, and uh, they have to go t through Division 2 before they get into Division 1, because, you know, they weren't in the qualifiers for Division 1 when they were held. Uh, they didn't try, so to get still to Division 1, which they do want, because there's nice money prizes also, uh, they need to go through Division 2. So they were up first the team that they were going to win from, and they're probably going to win from most teams in Division 2. But, um... So they, they tried around some crazy sets. So they tried around Wisp Pudge. It was fun to watch. Oh, That's man. awesome. Oh, man. It was, it was Poppy, Poppy Wisp and, of course, Dandy Pudge. It was yes. really fun. They, they actually tried to get the whole, you know, hook teleport to base mm -hmm. thing going. But they only succeeded once. And when they did, it was on an illusion. It was kind of sad for them, but they tried. <laughs> oh. <laughs> at least they got it to work. <laughs> yeah, at least it was still a very, very fun game to watch. Definitely. That's it was not, not a very even game. <laughs> well, probably not. I mean, with the teams we cast today, were they Division 2? Uh, no, they were Division 1. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, that makes there you go, sense. Top of the line. They were looking pretty good. I just didn't, I wasn't aware. Oh, no, I think the games we did earlier, BDLM, were Division 2. Yeah, that was Division 2. 404 that was versus We Has Asians? Yeah, okay. Okay. Division 2. I, th I don't know if it's Division 2A or 2B because there's two different ones. Oh, that's confusing. Actually, it was Division 2B. <laughs> okay. Are they worse than so A? Many numbers and letters. Is that the question? They're, are they worse than I don't A? Know. You don't know? They might be? I don't know. I don't think so. You feel superior, though, if you're in Group A. You have to admit that. I mean. Probably, yeah. Probably, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Not gonna lie. Start at the beginning of the alphabet. I mean, how could you not? That's right. very true, yep. and therefore Wisp should feel really weak then, because his last his name is at the end of it. So, oh, 
Or Wisp. That's okay. I, anyway. I'm no, surprised. he's actually named Guardian Wisp. Do you think he's not oh, yeah. picked as. Oh, okay. Okay. Alright, I guess that gives him a little leg up then in that regard, but just. I was, was going to see if, if the yeah. I and IO would work if we were going by his. Uh, his you can't his, do that. It's other name, but that's still Guardian puts him, puts him up. I still call, yeah, I yeah. call Brewmaster Panda all the time still. I can't get over the fact that he's not a panda I anymore. I call Storm Spirit Panda. What? Storm Spirit Panda. He I looks mean, like he, a panda. He was a panda. He walks like a panda. He talks like a panda. <laughs> he was a panda. And if you don't, if you don't see his head and you watch him from above, he is actually just like a panda. You had me it's until you said like talks like a panda. That's the <laughs> one that I thought was particularly it's interesting. It's a weird panda, but he talks like a panda. Really. <laughs> I don't consider all pandas to be talking like that because Brewmaster talks like a panda too. But it is a kind of panda, a storm panda. That's fair. I was gonna, I was gonna say they changed Brewmaster because I thought he looked like a badger before, more than a panda, and now he looks like a weird golden retriever. And now his, his little his little spirits look actually a lot like pandas. What do you call this, by the way? Can so. someone give me just clarification? Their, their names are just Storm, actually, Earth, well, and but I want a well, second word after that. I want like Storm Minion or Storm Brulings. Brulings. I think that's what Brulings. Toby started calling him. Yeah, Brulings. Brulings. Or just spirits, or maybe. I like brewlings. I could, I could live with, I could live with brewlings. I guess. I just need, I need that second word for whatever reason. When I'm casting a game, I'm like, the storm, and I don't want to stop there. I'm like, the storm's chasing him. The storm him. split. <laughs> yeah. Elemental would work, maybe. I guess you don't have anything else that would. Okay, mm. that's fine. I just, it just one of my little peeves. That's all. I'll get over it in time. There you go. Now you have a grab bag of titles, just in case for next time. <laughs> there you yep. go. You can just run through them all. You'll never be lost for words again. <laughs> Hopefully. Oh, <laughs> uh, God. Yeah. Yeah. So, in so what What kind of heroes do you guys think, like, actually, I mean, we kind of gotten far away from the Lanaya, but I'm kind of wondering, what kind of heroes do you think go well with her? Are there really any? I mean, I actually think uh, Vengeful Spirit is hilarious with her, and that's actually what Jay, you and me tried first in our, uh, our game with her, which was hysterical. Uh, but what kind of other heroes do you guys think match up well with her. Maybe like combinations, I don't know. Basically, lots she's more like a solo here, a solo ganker. But with her slow, you can match up any of the slow stuns, like Lina and Lashrak, I guess. Because they wouldn't be missing stuns anymore. True. But kind of everybody would be dead by the time that they get there. So, That's sure. really true. Yeah. Because she's, she's going to be soloing, not lo a dual lane. That could happen, but if only if, if it's like, yeah, just any support that in that case. Maybe a Vengeful Spirit, uh, sorry, a Venomancer steals just so the opponent doesn't have it. And of course, the slow is nice then too, if you, especially if you pick up face boots. Which you should, yeah. in my opinion. Pretty much, pretty much nine yeah, games out of exactly. ten. Yeah, exactly, that's what I said. Yeah. Yeah, I was actually, I was like, just popping around different guides I'd seen from people in, in uh, Dota 1, and yeah, everybody was like, yeah, this seems, the, you know, the other boots are nice, but we should just go phase. Phase is the way to go. Because yeah, you do get that extra speed boost, which is just awesome when you have that refraction up to be able to just chase people and down. damage for the big hit. It's all about the burst. Yeah. Well, that's why you get Yule's Scepter of Divinity, right? So that you that get the extra sense, movement speed. Actually. No. Stack. <laughs> I'm not even going to validate this troll speed. idea. No. That makes zero Yule Scepter, sense. Tranquil Boots, Yasha. What else? Drums of Endurance. And there you go. Pure move speed build? Yeah. yeah. Don't get it, but that's I don't okay. think that would work. No, I'm really, I'm really not even following that at all. So, nice try. Yeah, I think it would be better in that case if you just run around trying to get haste runes all the time. There you go. Probably more. Uh, or you have a dark steer with you, so you can get surged and you can run in there. There you go. That's a good one. The the one uh, the one thing that I did forget to mention earlier when we were talking about good counters to her is radiance will actually knock off her refraction stack. Yeah, well. true. True. So. Oh. So so yeah. shiny bear. Is the best counter. Yeah. There it one is. of the one of the better counters if he gets his farm up because he does need that. Very true. Which we have seen not always work that well, but you know. Then, then again. Well, th there was a lone druid up in that game. I mentioned there was a lone druid on the opposite side, and they did not win, so it was too late for them. There you go. Yeah, it does take some time. He to get takes up about that twenty-five minutes to get to where he needs to be in the game. That's kind of unfortunate. It's kind of almost like getting an anti-major faceless, like. 
you really can't even, at least Baseless actually has an ult, so I shouldn't throw him in the mix. He could actually help out his team, but Antivage is just like, yeah, I don't do anything until about 25 minutes, usually, unless, like, my team feeds me kills on a golden platter. So, uh, I think yep. Druid is pretty similar. Unless you, like, get those really lucky entangling procs, yeah, he's not doing a whole lot for those team fights. <laughs> True. Yeah, at least he can push. You know, get that that's nice okay. uh, de demolish going. That's fair, I suppose. Yeah. And you actually don't see him in fun. jungle in pro games either. It's probably because people can micro that bear, whereas I can't, which is why I run him in the jungle. But I don't know. I I, I think he's a uh, he he can do pretty well in either one. So I don't know. I'm not gonna I guess give my bias too much because I am not a pro player. But you know, to each their own. I'll leave it at that. Yep. There you go. So yeah, I think that that pretty much is uh, I think a good cover for Lanaya there. Even with the troll builds, I think we even got a yeah, couple we even of nice covered ones those. In there. You don't need to go too many yeah. others at that point. Divine Rapier actually should be part of the core. I feel like um, there you go. Just because you will one shot their whole team if they get lined up perfectly, that'd be pretty terrific. I think Vacuum Darkseer actually makes a ton of sense with Lanaya. If you could get them all one little bundle and then just throw your little side blade attack out, yeah, they're all at half health with just one health attack. Cool. Yeah, there you yeah. just you stand invisible, melded, and then you just have Darkseer just vacuum them in on top of you, so you don't have to level side blades at all, right? You just no, get you all one point. The one point here. does the splash. There you, so you go. Okay. Back. Yes, that's true. All right, there you go. Perfect. Done. Done. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Too many done. Lost for words. I am. Um, any, for, by yep. the way, viewers, if you have anything, actually I saw a question, but if you have any other questions, feel free to throw them in here uh, while we have her on. But yeah, I saw a thing about Naga Siren maybe being the next hero introduced. Now, do you think she's yep. going to be used at all in the competitive scene the way it's going? A Sheever? Yes. 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 Now, any, any follow-up or just yes? Good just, answer. You just know it? Um, your, well, I know she has an, I, I, I don't know a lot about her. She's just, she has, she's the one with the yellow hair, right? Yes. <laughs> Dota one. There, yeah. I mean, there's a okay. lot of yellow-haired people. I feel like so. Uh, wait, no, no, Naga there's two Siren? Nagas, and there's one with yellow hair, and there's one with black. There's no so hair. With Medusa. There's Never no mind. Hair. If you mean like it's a fin fins. or something, then yeah. then I'll go with that. No, well, it's the yellow top on the on <laughs> okay. the head. Okay. Yeah. I believe so. Yeah. She has a, she has a net. She can split mm -hmm. yep. illusions. Mm -hmm. And I think she she will be really useful because she is and the ganker and the pusher. It's what true. else does she have besides the net and a uh, and, be and crit, and then they changed or it to like what was it? What is it now? It's Riptide. It's a uh, an AOE that does damage and also gives armor reduction Ooh, okay. on a pretty yeah. short See, definitely. Now. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely good, good here and yeah. I think he, I think she will be used especially for our net because right now the only thing that you can have for net is of course with a Gen Troll Warlord, but. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's really useful for a lot of heroes. A lot of heroes won't be able to run away, like a uh, like a Dark Seer, for example, or like a uh, Wind Runner. You just can't escape. Yeah, it's actually a really long in scenario too. Like it goes up to five seconds. I'm actually interestingly enough, I'm looking at it right now. Apparently, Lincoln Sphere will block it, um, but then it is not placed on cooldown. Lincoln Sphere. What? Oh, that what? makes no sense. I think that doesn't. I don't think that that's how it's weird. gonna work in Dota 2. I don't believe that mechanics we'll could, that might just be like a Dota one the the way the the game worked one of the things. Might we'll, be. We'll have to see. Now it's I'm curious big. about that. But yeah, okay. Like the uh the Crystal Maiden Bat Rider thing. The what? Uh, yeah, in, in in Dota One you couldn't oh, freeze yeah. a Firefly Bat Rider. True. Just because of the way he was he was flying. flying. In it. Yeah. Yeah. You would fly. But right now you can still if you're frozen, you can still firefly. Right. Yeah. Because you can cast it spells. Works yeah. in Dota, it works in Dota 2 now, yeah. I'm pretty sure you can actually. Yeah. So, it's yeah. nice to have your own system to work with, isn't it? Point for Crystal Maiden. Yeah. yeah but uh <laughs> and then how about uh the other one that I just maybe this is more of a troll thing, but like Nick's Assassin who used to be an Arubian assassin in Dota 1, if you remember correctly. Oh, uh, it's the one that actually burrow strikes but stays where he is. Yes, yes. The one that goes invisible with his ulti and <gasps> comes out yeah. and hits you for half of your health alone. 
Oh, I remember. Yeah, he is one of the ones that I like I to deem as to unfun to play against in any game. Kind of like Techies. I think him and Techies are in the same boat in that regard. But a lot of people don't have as many ill will to as much ill will to, against him as Techies, which finds me I find really peculiar because I'm like, who the hell wants to play against? Sorry for my language. Whoa, who wants to play <laughs> against? Uh, this guy that just literally comes up and two shots you, especially like I believe in his core build. Uh, Dagon is literally in his core build. Like playing against a hero like that is just no way fun for anyone. <laughs> the extra five hundred and twenty-five bonus damage with oh, the uh, vendetta all? Ult okay. level three. Yep. Oh. So there's your your anti now, would hero. Be, would he be used though in a proceed? Is really my question there. I mean, well, I'm not sure. I think for the burst strike, you have a sand king anyway, and he has an epicenter, so I, I'm not sure. I don't think that much, but I I could be totally wrong. I don't know. I don't think so. But it's crazy. Yeah, I mean, we have seen Zeus not often, but he does get picked up. Like all these sort of random heroes, Lena gets picked up from time to time. These heroes we don't see too often. I don't know. I wouldn't be surprised if he like got picked up once or something, just to just to mess with people. That's another That's hero, by the way, Ember Spirit, who I know pretty much nothing about. I've watched one or two Dota 1 videos and seen him jump around like a crazy person and pretty much one-shot whoever he goes against. But I I've heard that he's one of those heroes as well that's just not fun to play against. So uh, I don't know. They're probably not going to tweak him too much, but I wonder uh, how that's going to – what's going to happen to the at least the pub seed when that happens because, like, you're going to see him picked up and people are just be like, I'm going to sit in Fountain for the rest of this game. This is – forget it, you know. I'm waiting for Tusker because I just want to roll into people as a giant snowball, and I think that's just the greatest thing ever. Tusker is that the one that can switch between melee and range? No, that's, that's uh, Warlord. Um, Troll Warlord. Tusker can turn into a giant snowball and will pick up allied heroes while he's rolling towards his target. Tusker is Walrus Man. That yes. is what you need to know. No, his... there's a Magnetor. Mm mm, different hero. Was he a Magnetor? Uh, no, he was like literally a he was literally like, like a, a fat a walrus, walrus person. thing. <laughs> <laughs> like in WoW, okay, one of the so then Tuskars he was the one WoW. after I uh, after I left because I well I yeah. know the Tuskars in World of Warcraft they probably look like that one then but mm. I uh, I you don't think I've ever seen him in Dota one. That. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, we did too. So. Don't get me wrong. The heroes were naming off. We actually don't really know a darn thing about. We we just <laughs> see them like on the list of heroes and then like kind of watch a video or two and like. Uh, we're like, oh, that's what he does. That's kind of neat. But yeah, I, we really have no idea how they work in the actual game. So it's going to be kind of cool. And then when all these heroes do get released, they're going to have brand new heroes, which is going to be cool for everyone, because who knows what Valve is capable yeah. with Ice Frog of thinking up, you know? I, I do hope that they're not going to add too much, though, because then you have the League of Legends scenario oh. where you can just have heroes that are basically replaceable with each other. Mm -hmm. That would be really a shame. I want every hero to be really unique, mm -hmm. still. Yeah, so you think even with, like, heroes that sort of have overlap, I'm just thinking, like, Legion Commander sort of also has a taunt-like axe, but it j just functions so differently. Like, I'm definitely glad that at least the from reading the last couple of heroes that Ice Frog put into the game, still very interesting. So, yeah, hopefully... I mean, it seems like they're, they're going to be able to do just fine with all of the, uh, the content, all of the, the costume items, the hats as you were, so they won't have yeah. to pump out heroes so quickly, I hope. Yeah, I don't think they, they need it for a very long time, because, I mean, it's then, uh, when everything is in, it's a r still a really new game, and everybody will have to have the time to, you know, get to know all the heroes, so it should be at least a year before they release any new heroes, that's what I'm going to say. Ooh, bold because, statement, yeah. bold yeah. statement, okay. It I'll probably take, I'll take that bet be against sooner. you if you want to. No, 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 it probably <laughs> will be sooner, but it, I... Personally, I would like to see it if they have to bring in new heroes because I don't think they have to. Uh, they they should wait a long time with it. Yeah. I think I might agree with you at least in the competitive scene. But knowing that Valve is interested in making money off this game, I, I'm pretty much guaranteeing that heroes will be released and then skins after that, as well as who knows what other awesome things. But actually, speaking of skins. Uh, I believe you were saying that there was, in this latest patch, uh, a whole bunch of stuff, including uh, community stuff added to the game? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can check out the Morphling. The Morphling really looks... I really think he like, looks great. Yeah. Um, let me see. I can't find it. But yeah, he looks great. That's what I'm just going to say. You should check it out. 
I, th I think there may be more community made, but I'm not sure. Actually, there is, of course, the Storm Spirit sound pack introduced. Mm -hmm. There's also a Pirate Storm pack, but the Pirate Storm, but the Pirate Dimester pack is actually also uh, made by someone else. Made by, not by Valve. Oh, someone oh, did that. Cool. I remember seeing Valve. that in the store. That, oh, so they actually took that guy's pack. That's really cool. I, the yeah. only thing that I don't like about the store is you can't preview those announcer packs. Like, you don't get to hear, oh. at least I didn't see anything. Yeah. Get to hear what they sound like ahead of time, which is unfortunate. I do. I do think the store spirit is yeah. He's, he's probably really fun, just because you know he's got a fun voice regardless. I'm not yeah. all about a pirate pack. Oh come or on, Mateys, the tower is going down. Mateys, e, the tower has scurvy. I don't I actually have no idea what it says, but that was terrible. I hope that was it horrible. Say that. I'm not a pirate, in fact, so I probably well, am not the the most yeah. accurate of those sorts, but uh, there's definitely some other heroes, I think. And, like, the great thing is, people have said, since it is made by Valve, they're definitely going to... In fact, they already have with a Half-Life voice pack, but they can definitely now draw on these other Valve titles, such as Portal, such as, like, Gladys and Portal. I don't know how many other of these games you play, Shiver, so I'm not going to try to go too far into them. Oh. Hey, okay. You, you're, you're a WoW in Dota 2 girl, that's it, right? That's pretty <laughs> much all you can When I play a game, I probably play it for, like, full-time. Apart from I play Skyrim for two weeks, two weeks full-time, and I play Diablo, but that didn't, didn't interest me enough to keep playing it while I had Dota. You say full-time like it was just, like, a yeah. job. Like, you were just, like, two weeks, no, no. I, I didn't leave my computer, I was just playing the Skyrim game, you know? <laughs> well, I was uh, I was a raider, and I raided six nights to five nights a week. So then you skip easily to to five to six nights a week from a different game. So then oh, five I to six, and and that was I only had my nights because the, you know I worked full time. But uh, yeah. There you go. Yeah, I would I would love a Gladys voice pack. I think that would be awesome. Actually, It'd be fantastic. Are there, I think I saw like a companion cube courier, or maybe I'm just inventing that, and I'm hoping somebody makes that. I think that would be fantastic. Could totally live with that. See, once again, you're referencing things she doesn't know. But I agree completely, oh. as a Portal enthusiast myself. Uh, but yeah, um, actually, someone gave me a direct message on Twitter saying that the way to preview those, if someone on your team has the voice pack, that's one way to do it. Uh, also, apparently, using the internet, aka YouTube, is another great way to find out what these things sound like. So you don't have to go in blind, BDLM, just to let you know. There you go. Don't have to drop the seven dollars just willy nilly and hope for the best. Yeah, pretty much. Indeed. Hey. So, uh, uh, let's see here. Uh, nope, I didn't have anything else. I, was, I thought right. I had something right there, and then I misread it. So, fantastic. Well, that's good. As well. I think I think it's probably a good time to wrap it up. Yeah. Yeah. Well, first of all, yeah. let, let's let Cheever go ahead and give your shout outs to your information to people. Of, of course, I believe most of the live viewers are here. Probably 28 of the 29 are here for you exclusively. But still, go ahead and give your shout outs <laughs> to your stuff and whatnot. Well, you know, since I do it every time after a cast, I kind of got it programmed. You can follow me on Twitch, on GG Shiver, on Twitter, on Shiver Gaming, on Facebook, on Shiver Gaming, on YouTube, on Shiver Gaming. And you can check out my website, ShiverGaming.com, where you can find all the information I said back. So do that. Fantastic. Oh, I have another quick question. I believe I saw Fantastic. on your, your Twitch page this, this little donation thing that said, send me to the international. Did did that? Did yeah. that happen? Did uh, you... Some people did. Is not enough yet. Ah. I still hope that I can go, go. but uh, some people did donate. Yeah. We are going. So submit yeah. money, people. Yeah. <laughs> Just we can thing. have like a big caster party after uh, the international. That'd be fantastic. Yeah. We should totally yeah. get working okay, well, on that. <laughs> would be cool. <laughs> Alrighty. Well, well, thank you very much for joining us. Please don't be a stranger. You're, of course, welcome back whenever you like. And, uh, yeah, anybody here, please go check out Shiver Stuff. It is awesome and fantastic. And, uh, yeah, we will see you guys next week for episode number 36 of this Dota On Demand podcast.